Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, I'm here to report back on the heightened incidence of murders in Greater Masaka region. A right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, this Honorable House and indeed the country have been alarmed by what has been happening in Greater Masaka sub-region and I'm here to report to the House about that matter and the measures being taken by government to deal with the problem. At the onset of this uh, session, you ask that we stand in honor of the lives lost and those injured. I would want to add that we need to do more than that. We need to avenge their mother by finding the culprits and bringing them to book. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, rampant killings have indeed taken place in Luengo District and also some in Masaka District from the months of June to about yesterday, but one. Where the country this far has lost 26 uh, precious lives as follows. On the 5th of July 2021, at Kenangasi village, Chiseka sub county of Engo district, one Kawesi Kasim, aged 50 years, was murdered by a known asylum. In this regard, one second Kuraish was arrested to help in the investigation. B, on the 21st of July 2021, at around 2100 hours in Taga village, in Kony sub county of Wengo district, one commander John, a male adult of about 60 years, and one Kalia Vincent, 43 years old, were murdered by the same uh, silence at the same time. The following suspects were arrested in that incident. Sewan Kambo Muhammad and Chivirango John Bosco, who are now undergoing. Uh, they, are, they were, yesterday they took uh, statements uh, before a magistrate and they were being processed for prosecution. C, on the 31st July 2021, at around 21.50 hours, in Nakatete village, Seka sub county, Wengo district, one on Kaka Francis, a male adult aged 60 years, and Kawesi Godfrey, male aged 40 years, were also murdered by a known asylum. No arrests have been made this far in this regard, but investigations are continuing to trace for the killers. D, on the 1st of August, at around 20 hundred hours, near Katindo Trading Center, Ndagwe sub-county, Wengo district, one Mugenye, a male adult of 35 years, was murdered by unknown people. Tiseka Siraje and Sewaji Derek were arrested to help in investigations in this matter. E, on the 1st of August, at around 2200 hours, at Seka B village, Seka sub county, Wengo district, one Wanika Joseph, male adult, aged 50 years, was murdered by unknown people. No arrest has been made, but investigations continue to trace for the suspect. F, on the 4th of August, 2021, at around 200 hours, at Katoma, Chanjovu village, Wengo rural, sub county, Wengo district, Dumba Joseph Utankoma, a male adult of 59 years, was killed by a known asylum. Namata Justin has been arrested to help in this regard. G, on 12 August 2021, in Malongo village, Malongo sub county, Wengo district, the one Lubega Ramadan, male adult of 60 years, was found murdered and his body dumped in a kiranja of one known as Faizo. On 15th of August 2021, at Mpumu, the village, Yakavirizi Parish, Chazanga, rural, sub-county, Luengo district, 
Kayemba Soweli, male adult, 29 years, was waylaid by a known assailant and murdered. His body was found dumped along Kawesi Road in the same village. On the 16th August 2021, Nibianjiri village, Chitos Parish, Lengo, Rengo Rural Sub County, Rengo District, the following people were waylaid and murdered. One, Sebuama Ibrahim, male adult, 47 years old. Mande Ronald Katende, male adult, 20 years. Gali Wango Paul, male adult, 58 years. All of these residents of the same area. Two suspects, right honorable speaker, have been arrested in this regard to help in investigations. They were found with some exhibits of the victims, clothes with blood stains, and some tools suspects, suspected to have been used in the murder. The suspects are Kaganda Tumwesi Musa, male adult, 26 years old, and Kavayo Henry, male adult, 30 years old. All of these, the two are residents of the same area. J, right honorable speaker, honorable members, on 18th August 2021, at around 2000 hours in the Gea village, Nakatete Parish, Kiseka Sub County, Rengo District, a one Kato Semwanga Godfrey, adult, 45 years, a resident of the same area, was waylaid, hit and injured with multiple uh, blows on the head by unidentified free asylums who are hiding in a eucalyptus plantation in the same, in the same area. The victim was evacuated by the relatives to the nearest health facility in Chinoni Town Council. K. Mbazira Richard, 60 years old, resident of Chavogo Village in Koni Parish, Chingo Sub County, Wengo District, working as a deputy catechist in Chingo Parish, was murdered on 22nd August 2021. On the night of 22nd August 2021, in Chikunwe, I think it's Chikungwe, Chikungwe a village, Butare Parish, Chimanya, Kabonera Division, one Mukasa Idilisa, eight years old, was murdered in front of his house. The assailants also killed three people on the night of 23rd August 2021 in Situala village. Senya Ward, Chimanya, Kabonera Division of Masaka. These were hit and died instantly, and the deceased include Mugera Francis, otherwise known as Chiza Nswa, 60 years old, Kakoza Suleiman, 54 years old, Chimba Tamukuze, 42 years old, all residents of the same area, though murdered from different spots. And on the night of 24th August 2021, in Chikala village, Chamuli Ward, Chimanya, Kabonera Division in Masaka, Tony Uchamuzi, 74 years old, was injured by a known assailant. He didn't die, uh, thank God. On the night of 25th August 2021, Nampija Muhangaza, female aged 75 years old, and Yeye Peter, male aged 30 years, both residents of Chisale village, Visa and Yawad, Chimanya, Kabonera Division, Masaka, City, were attacked and killed. On the night of 27th August, in Chiseka village, Chitele, Yawad, Chimanya, Kabonera Division, Masaka, City, unknown asylums killed one Mulindwa, Madi, aged 45 years, and injured Semanda, Jimmy. On the night, of 28th August 2021 in Wasa village, Kasana Parish, Kingo Sub County, Wengo District, a one Kankundie Joyce, 70 years old, and her granddaughter, aged six years old, were hit and later pronounced dead at Masaka Rufaro Hospital. They are hit as they slept in their house. On the night of 28th August 2021, one Nakato aged Eight years old, a resident of Stenga Village Parish, Kadugara Ward, Nyendo Mukungwe Division, Masaka City, was killed by a known assailant. 
Again on the night of 28th August 2021, Chirembwa Henry, male aged 81 years old, a resident of Choko, Kaganda Parish, Chingo Sub County, Rengo District, was attacked and killed by unknown thugs. On the night of 29 August 2021, Izina Vicent, male aged 75 years old, resident of Umundwe Village, Wakabirizi Parish, Chazanga, rural sub county Rongo district was attacked and killed by unknown asylums. Uh, right honorable speaker, honorable members, that is the list of the details of the victims of these murders. The second item of insecurity in the area regarding dropping of anonymous letters and I want to report as follows. There have been incidents indeed of dropping anonymous letters in the districts of Raqqa and Kumansimbi within the months of July and August, and the following are the occurrences. On the 3rd of July, 2021, in Raqqa district in areas of Karingo village, Rwanda sub-county, this letter was demanding money with menaces from Garra Charles on telephone number 0772343861 and also 0753737158 in the village, threatening that failure to pay, he would lose his life or his children. His house was torched on 4th August, but fire was put off by the community. The telephone number that demanded ransom money was 0755466932. The suspect, known as Mwere Charles, was fortunately arrested and he confessed to writing the letter uh, to his uncle to pay dowry for him. Also in Bukoman Simbi district on 18th June 2021, in Chivinge sub-county on the 16th of July 2021, Chitanda sub-county, and on the 28th July 2021 in Chivinge sub-county, all the letters written were demanding money and threatening some individuals, including the area LC1 chairman of Chibinge sub-county. On the 5th of August, at Misang Trading Center, on a border-border stage next to the police post in Chibinge sub-county, Kumansim, a letter was written, dropped, threatening the police and demanding from them guns purportedly to start an armed rebellion. Uh, in use of the said letters, also in the said letters, 14 young people were named as being identified and they are marked for recruitment into rebellion. And these were approached by security and interrogated, but in the wisdom of security, they were released, but they are in touch with security. Analysis. The murders are not motivated by proprietary gain since nothing is taken from the victims. However, the criminals in some few incidences used snatched phones of the victims to communicate to the relatives of the victims. Whatever the motive, the intended effect has been to cause fear, terror, and apprehension in the public. They use the same killing method of hitting the victims on the head with blunt objects, and the killings have been in large measure indiscriminate, except for the last ones, which were mainly targeting old people. The pattern of killing is also similar. Timings mainly between 20, 100 hours and 2200 hours at night by relaying the victims and or attacking vulnerable people in their houses. They've been using motorcycles and foot for mobility, as testified by some of the survivors. Actions taken. Below are the actions taken in Rengo district. Apprehension of a number of suspects has been done and their cases are being processed for prosecution. Joint operations with police in small squads, manning snap checkpoints and searching for suspects. Apprehension and checking motorcycles, rather impounding motorcycles and motor vehicles moving at night for any suspected individuals moving beyond uh, the curfew hours in the area. Intensified intelligence for any related lead information. 
foundation security mobilization and formation of security committees in the affected communities and reinforcement of the police with additional boots on the ground has been undertaken. Reinforcement with canine and other technical capabilities, including forensic uh, capabilities, uh, to boost investigations. In Bukoma and Simbi, right honorable speaker and honorable members, we've also intensified joint motorized patrols to instill confidence in the local community, especially in Chivinge and Chitanda sub counties. The four suspects arrested. Uh, these are Jingo James, Semanda Daudi, Mawanda Musa, and Chiganda Henry were all remanded in prison. Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, uh, these are the recommendations from the planning group uh, doing operations that they need adequate logistics to intensify the ongoing operations within Masaka, Ruengo, Raka, and Kumansi in the districts. They are the culprits and have them prosecuted. Uh, they are undertaking regular mobilization meetings uh, by different security teams with the locals as a way of instilling confidence in the communities and also enhancing information collection. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, it is also recommended uh, that specialized investigation teams, and these have been indeed detailed to the affected areas, uh, be uh, assigned to handle case management properly and ensure those arrested are successfully prosecuted. Uh, we've had some confessions and it took uh, the need to uh, send uh, skilled people to ensure that those uh, confessions are again re-recorded before magistrates in order to have them admitted in evidence when prosecution take off. Reorganization of foundation security within the communities is being uh, undertaken with all the critical steps, strands of timely intelligence collection, coordination between the operating forces, communication, and rapid response or reaction. Senior security leaders have been assigned by the National Security Council to go to the affected areas on a non-spot assessment and to work out an effective plan of action with the area district security agencies in order to decisively deal with this insecurity, bring the culprits to book and return normalcy to the affected communities. The recourse to this reprehensible immoral approach of killing Ugandans is shallow, is untenable, and will be defeated. Deployment of additional security personnel to dominate the affected areas has been effected in order to restore communal confidence and prevent escalation of the problem. Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, I will also propose, and indeed, I want to report that something is being done by government to organize some compassionate assistance to those families that have lost loved ones or had their people injured. I beg to submit, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. Thank you. brutal killings and as Parliament of Uganda we extend our condolences to the bereaved families in the Greater Massacre upon the demise of their beloved ones and as Parliament will do whatever it takes to ensure that sanity comes back in the region. I open the debate for 45 minutes. Uh, I would first thank the Minister for the report that he has presented. In the Minister's communication, she's talking about 25, 26 lives that we have so far lost. Uh, I want to uh, when we look at, uh, and in consideration of a German pastor who said that first they came for the Jews and because I was not a Jew, I never said anything. I want you to allow me to say something about uh, 
the breakdown of our system, mostly the intelligence system I would want to consider. Uh, Honorable Minister, my, co my concern is we have uh, an intelligence system right from the region. We have the regional intelligence officers, we have uh, the district intelligence officers, we have the, Go the Gombora or the GISOs or the sub county intelligence officers, we have the parish intelligence officers, we have the LOC defense team at, at each village, we have LDUs that enforce curfew, we have the RPC in the same region, we have the DPC, and certainly every, every sub county has a police station. Now, Honorable Minister, when you tell us that we should run after the killers and bring them to book, why don't we first talk about the breakdown in, the, in this system? How can we have all these officers who are supposed to detect and have this intelligence provided to government before anything happens, fail to detect until we lose 26 people? To me, I think there is something we need to discuss as government. And part of the discussion is, can we look at where the intelligence team has failed? If it's about the resources, let's deal with them. If it's about the operational commands, let's also deal with them. Well, otherwise, I would say we are just covering something down, and eventually it will come to us. Honorable Minister, I want you to help us understand where the intelligence system has failed to have identified these killers before they even happen, and then we can start from there. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for your time. Thank you. This issue was raised by Nanyondo into it. Let's look at a bigger picture. Why are these people being killed? Let's not put politics in this thing. Because at the end of the day, Today they are killing somebody who is maybe NRM, DP, NUP, and whatever. As parliament, we must come out with a solution without looking at politics. In this parliament, we debate on facts, and you stand with the facts even when you are out of this parliament. Right on, Speaker, would it be procedural right the only member to stand here, debate in anticipation, accuse our men and women in uniform who start order, in this country order. and then goes Madam without Speaker. withdrawing the uh, statement. Would Madam that Speaker. be procedural right? Honorable, right Honorable Speaker. Honorable. Order. Order was on a procedural matter. Order <laughs> Uh, Honorable Silwan, I already ruled the member out of order when she was talking. And I said, let's not debate in speculation. Members, the people, the armed, so called armed people, are not using guns. So let's debate on this thing to see how we help our people. Let's not put emotions in this kind of debate. And that is how made any speech. Oma, you talk. The, the list you are talking about, is it exhaustive? Because I have not heard Kakoza Abubeka who was murdered in Takajunge. I have the number for the police report. I have not heard Sebana Kita James from Chitanga, who the CBR is 445, stroke 20, 2021. And uh, the other two people that were murdered are also in Chitanga. I have not heard, Honorable Minister, from you that these people are now burning houses in the night. Three days ago, they burnt houses in Inconi, sub, Inconi Parish, and I saw you in Masaka. Honorable Minister, I've just sent money to a defense secretary in Chitterede Parish, 
and they asked me this money that they are going to repair a motorcycle for police. They don't have logistics. I've been in all those police stations, you are aware. There is no logistics. We are wondering, why is it that you are not giving priority to logistics in that area? I've seen in your report the actions. You have talked about Bukoma and Simbi. You have talked about Rengo. Where is Masaka City in the action area? I've not seen Masaka City. I've not seen your actions in Masaka District also, which is suffering the same. Right, mm -hmm. Honorable Speaker, I need clarity on those areas. Maybe I could also get a clarification from you. And the issue that is being raised, the report is on the Greater Massacre, no. not on the no, villages. No. Dr. Trua, huh? More specifically, Luengo and Bukoto South, and that is the area uh, where I'm the MP. Uh, Honorable, Honorable Minister, I want to inform you that the information you've given is not substantive like my colleague, uh, Dr. Bedi, has mentioned. Let me inform you that to, to, uh, yesterday, at around 13 hours, there was a gentleman by name of Peter Kivumbi, a 36-year-old from Bunyere Degea, who was dissected half dead and is currently lying in Masaka Hospital. There has, I've just received information right now uh, this is in Chazanga Muchomo. One of the vigilant teams that we are put in place have just arrested a person with the pangas again, and he has survived the lynching. So that besides, right honorable speaker, I want to put this information before parliament that to allows these efforts have been put in place and we are aware several arrests have been affected. But we much know that this is a societal problem, and in, among these arrestees, we are sure not all those are associated with the crime that is taking place. Security personnel have gone ahead to screen these people, but unfortunately, they are creating a circadian rhythm of problem and impoverishment of our people, the DPCs, uh, DPCs uh, OCs, they ask for ransoms of money before re releasing these people who have been screened not guilty of the can, problem. Can you give us the name of a DPC or OC who has asked for money so that we, we take an action? I, I, I would, right on I speak, I wouldn't want to be to rub shoulders. Let's take the information. The information yesterday... You know, we must... I beg be evidence. Information, information. This is... Right, Honorable. The OC asked one of the people who were there to report a case of Kasana, three million to release him. The OC of where? The OC of Unconi Police Station. Okay. In Irwengo. Okay. So, um, you're here for your people. If you cannot speak the truth for your people, then you're not supposed to represent them. No, right on a speaker. Because uh, he finds out whether it is true or not. So our prayer is that these people, be, once they are screened, Order let them right be taken speaker. even to their home places. Because Order some of right them are speaker. from far. Thank you. Right on honorable speaker for him to mention that there is an officer soliciting money without mentioning his name. Right now, Right now, right honorable speaker, the Hello. name of the DPC has been mentioned. My Hello. colleague Hello. honorable mentioned the OC, so the colleague must mention the name of the DPC so that Hello. that Hello. problem can be put to rest. Hello. Right honorable speaker, a close perusal of the statement clearly shows that since July, when the when they, start, they started tracking the murders in Great Massacre, no single person 
has been lined before court. The report is clear about that. Reasons not stated in the report. Did, Hence you, did you listen to the report well? Yes. Minister, are there no people in, in prison? Not. How does one go to prison without going to court? Can you make a clarification on that? Uh, is, uh, I think his assumption of the Honorable Member is that arrest started by beginning of July. No, they didn't. They didn't. But as of yesterday, 11 suspects, uh, right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, were going to appear in court by yesterday. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I think I, uh, my statement is clear. Save for some two people who were later on remanded, right from the people who, were, who have been arrested since 5th July. The reference numbers are there. No case numbers, no court case numbers are indicated anywhere uh, in this statement. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, this gives the, uh, the confirmation um, of Mr. Abed and Kagabo. When a person is arrested and detained for all this long, first of all, it becomes illegal. And this has been one of the grounds which lead to cases from police to be dismissed. Because once an illegality is committed arising from detaining a person beyond the 48 hours, the case itself is finished. I am wondering what the right honorable minister can state about that. Two, as I'm winding up, right honorable speaker, so far the RDC, the RCC in Masaka has been transferred. I don't know whether the right honorable minister, the, the minister has thought of causing a change in the security system in Masaka. To, to pave way for the new blood to come in and to provide security to the people. He has not mentioned anything to do with that. Thank you. Members, we have 69 uh, people in custody and uh, aware that these are capital offenses for which they are held and the lengthy procedure of arraignment of people in capital offenses. When were they arrested? We are mindful of procedure, so we use caution and charge to remand as we process the cases. When were they arrested? At different dates, right, Honorable Speaker. Pardon? At different dates. Different, different dates. dates. The first one, when was the first arrested? I have to refer to my records. Uh, you know, you need to be mindful of the law. The intelligence system has broken down. It is unfortunate that there are killings in Masaka. We are sad because these are Ugandans just like us. It is our business to secure Ugandans. But security is the business of all of us. Our operations are mainly intelligence-led. Intelligence Order. is got from all of us. Order, Madam Speaker. That is our maiden speaker for the protection. I would like to appeal to all of us, especially colleagues from the greater Masaka region. Let everybody who knows something about this cooperate and give us information. We need information from each one who knows something because each crime is motivated by something. So instead of blaming, blaming, I request that we volunteer information so that we deal with this precisely. I thank you. Thank you. Colleagues, um, this is my maiden speech and I thank you for giving me a chance to say something, because... Um, Maiden speech. <laughs> thank you. Dr. Right Nekesa does not belong to... Yes? Let him say what he wants to say. Madam Speaker, Geno, Geno Tafiri. His deputy is a Geno, David Muhoz. They are the ones who are running this sector together with the two colleagues. The rest of us, 
want to give them information so they can act. They have presented a statement and they want to debate it. So the procedure issue I'm raising is whether UPDF should present a statement here and then debate it. In fact, the president said, the commander-in-chief, that UPDF must be a listening post. That's what the president said, that they are here to listen. One general presents a statement, other generals jump up. Ibrahim, the report is presented as a Minister of Internal Affairs. The lady who is on the floor is here in her own right as a member of parliament. She took an oath like, just like you took it, unless you amend the law that we should not have the army in the house. Dr. Nekesa, can you continue? I'm going to talk about security. And uh, security is broad. Ye ladies and gentlemen, honorable colleagues, we are looking at security. And besides the, the uh, issue of, 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 of the one with the guns and, and the defense, we as legislators here will need to look at some of these things critically. Because fresh in our memories, about three years back, we had the Kidawali the, 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 uh, uh, and the hero in Nachamba Day coming up, and that showed collective responsibility and acts of heroism, courageous acts. Now, three years later, hardly three years later, we're having this coming up in the same area, and we're talking about it as it's a blame game, or it is pointing fingers, or challenging it. I implore members of parliament here, however much we may have uh, the machetes coming in the community, and one of our members raising the point that these are community, communal acts that are not welcome, they're affecting uh, our electorate, your electorate, the Ugandans at large, and all of us, including the members of parliament, the community, individuals in the home, and the bigger security coming from big guns to intelligence raised by one of us as collective responsibility. We need to look at this critically and look at areas of security in broader lenses. We can think about it by emphasizing our work here in getting the people of Uganda better because insecurity could be from human insecurity or personal level. Once we work hard, just one more uh, uh, speaker, just one last minute. We would request that we work harder and concentrate on getting our people to understand security and work harder to raise household incomes, get that economic sense of security, health, and every other aspect that makes them not try to even go and kill others to make statements about their poor economy status or their insecurities or, or, or their anger. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the minister who actually served in Masaka. Members, I'm giving you only two minutes so that the rest speak. As the, uh, the commander of Masaka is Masaka. But Honorable Speaker, it has taken the government and the security forces in this country a full month to go and make a non spot assessment of the killing headed by General Mohose who in Masaka. What we need here are the remedies. DPCs are given 500,000 as operation fund per month. Districts like Karungu, Masaka, Luengo, the police district, district police commander has only one vehicle. At this stage, we are supposed to deploy. The minister, right now, speaker, must be camping there, maybe the city agencies, to solve the problems. Right now, speaker, what we are saying is bipartisan and people being killed are not in NRM, no problem, but they are Ugandans. However, the attention given by government must be seen to do something that is viable. General, you are there. What did you see? By now, you will be providing people with the whistles in the houses. If they need the pangas, give them pangas to safeguard themselves. It's not a joke, because those killing them have pangas. Provide the pangas to our people to safeguard their lives. Otherwise, right now, speaker, what are we saying? Massacre, greater massacre now must be under out, must be out of curfew. Because people you are arresting as once you caught, get walking. Right now, speaker, what is happening in our region is that the police goes to those bars, massacre town, city, and others, people are drinking and they arrest those. 
Now, people who are working are, are arrested. I don't agree. I agree with that. You have to get suspects. But massacre must be out of lockdown now. Training people to safeguard themselves so that we avoid the killing. But it's very unfortunate that it has taken the government a whole month and security forces when they are hearing information every day to go there. That's when General Mohos went there. And he's lucky. Normally, whenever those people given the massacre mass merchandise, they come out as army commanders, including him. He knows how he has become an army commander because massacres have hold you, held you very well and the route you take. Is it the same tweet? Just two seconds. My question to the minister and to the members if this problem was somewhere else outside of Uganda, outside the massacre, would you, think, would you take the same attention? Stop We've seen this happen. Stop being a tribalistic. Honorable, stop being a tribalistic. The same thing, there is nothing special. Issues of security are collective effort. Let's join the hands as members of parliament, as leaders, and it's, we see how we get this out. But when we start apportioning blame, it is because it's in massacre. That is thinking in a very myopic way. So, Honorable Sewong, I mean... The point that the Honorable Sewong makes, the areas in Uganda where people who are grazing have guns, you all saw the Honorable Rukutana grazing with the Anya K-47. You, you see, you can't talk about Rukutana here when he's not able to respond to you. Madam, so can matter, you get out to Rukutana's name? That matter hmm? is, was brought here. It is on the answer. No, but there is no Rukutana here to respond to your allegation. That's why I said, Madam, this matter is on the answer because it was raised here and Honorable Rukutana made a response. Honorable Madam Samuel, Speaker, make your point without referring to a person who Madam, is not Madam, in the house. Madam Speaker, I fear the next statement I make may annoy you again. <laughs> Honorable, you see, <coughs> Honorable I'm not annoyed. I was, I was born in Chazanga, which is Ruengo. The minister makes a reference. This matter is emotional. That while in other areas you will have people grazing with the AK-47, in our area people are being butchered, and those whose duty it is to protect them are in Kampala. Madam Speaker, in the last elections, when there was a protest here, the whole of my constituency was covered by soldiers at every school, at every program, because there was a need to protect power. And I warned General Kaihura, the moment you become a regime protection force and you forget about lives, if there was a protest, General Moses will now be in massacre, deploying commandos from Somalia, deploying uh, those who are in the mountains, because in their mind, protection of regime is now more important than lives. That's why they are not in massacre. That's why policemen don't have fuel. If we are unable to protect our people, then you allow us to protect ourselves, everybody for himself. There is an order here. In order for Honorable, first of all, Honorable Sewungu politicized it. He said it's because it's in Uganda, they're not giving them enough attention. Actually, my prayer for you is that they withdraw that statement from the record. And then number two, it's me with a the microphone. Then number two, Madam Speaker. By the way, Enos is also from Greater Uganda. I'm from Uganda, and I'm speaking as a Buganda, by the way, for your information. Now, my, <laughs> my concern, Madam Speaker, is it in order for Honorable Semuju to politicize this matter, yet you had already guided us on not politicizing. Let's all uh, this, uh, debate this issue as a concern for every Ugandan, whether it's in Uganda, whether it's in the northern region, whether it's in the south. We all know that when it's in security, it's everywhere. So I, I, I request that the two gentlemen should stop politicizing this debate. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As I told you, that me, nothing can annoy me. 
because we have also gone through the same in TESO. So it is not really good for us to politicize this thing. As I've said before, it's a problem for all of us. It is not only a problem for people from Masaka. It is for all the Ugandans. I mean, we are here to lead Ugandans, not regions. So if it was for all the Masaka, then would we be debating it in the house? We would have left it for the people of Masaka. So let's not politicize this thing. Let's look for a solution for this issue. And let's jointly discuss this issue together without politicizing. Yes, the security was in your constituency. Honorable Semuju. Yes, the security was in your constituency. Maybe it was protecting you. Madam, if so, so that should not be the learning issue. Let's look at a solution. What the leaders of this country? Madam, in conclusion, the other areas, and, and I said... Give me a solution, not yes, lamentation. I'm providing a solution. When we had problems in northern Uganda, citizens there were asked to form themselves into militia from Aro to Amoka, and they were given guns. If those who are holding guns are unable to protect people, please go and distribute guns in Masaka. Our people will protect themselves, like you did with the Aro, with the Amoka. That's the solution I am providing. Now, members, they are more of targeting older people. If we want, this is a community problem. Mobilize the youth. Let the youth take charge of the area. And all what we can do is to provide more funds. Work should work, youth should work together with the security to protect the area. And once you get into that, you will not see any person coming to your area. Yes, Alan? Thank you. In your last statement, you mentioned how you are going to inform government in the cabinet to organize some compassionate assistance to the families that have lost their loved ones and to the injured people. One wonders which type of that compassionate assistance. Is it Mabugo, this one, where someone dies and you give 50,000 in, the bar, in a, an envelope, or compensating for the lost lives? Because this government has history that wherever it mentions itself about compensating to people who have lost lives in battles and uh, due to the negligence of government, that thing doesn't come out. They don't give them that money. So how are we sure that this time around in Masaka, these people will be given some tangible compensation for their lost, li lost loved ones and the treatment very sure to the injured ones. Again, uh, to add on as information, because I was about to give information to Honorable Semuju and realized that I was next to talk. Um, in Kampala here, Madam Speaker, even the playing fields have been taken over by security men. They have put their camping things inside those grounds, the tents. One wonders why. Yet in Masaka we have an urgent problem. Why don't they take them to Masaka and they camp there for two months or three months so that they solve that problem once and for all rather than being in Kampala here where they don't have anything to do with the security threats. Information. information. I give you information. information. Honor. That, uh, I am born on the sewers of Lake Victoria in Busia. The population of soldiers is very alarming. As my colleague says, we have security officers almost camped everywhere in the city. We have too many soldiers, more than the number of fish on the lakes of Victoria. And to give this as evidence, Madam Speaker and my colleagues, last week I witnessed when the anti-fishery soldiers were burning nets and boats. I therefore would like to inform the country and request General Internal Affairs Minister, that those soldiers that are too much keeping the fish should go and keep the people of Great Massacre. Thank you for the information. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I would like to appreciate the Minister.
for finally going to massacre. It happened. Never ever should it happen in this country. That people be killed for a month every single day, and it takes a whole month for the concerned minister to establish presence and eventually give a report. That said, Madam Speaker, I would like to give a caution. And this caution is based on, and I'm glad the minister is a lawyer, I'm told. Article 28.3a of our constitution provides that anybody arrested or charged is presumed innocent until proved guilty or until that person has pleaded guilty. Madam Speaker, I've seen the police at their press conferences say we have arrested these criminals about this particular matter and several others. We have arrested these criminals, etc., etc., and they treat them as such. But who made you a court of law? These people are suspects. And the reason I insist on this matter is because many times when there's a situation such as this, security operatives will scamper and just arrest people. We have seen that happening. When somebody is murdered, they will go and arrest Muslims, as if it is Muslims who are killing people. And then eventually courts have set these people free. And, and so it's important that these people who are arrested, because I believe many of them should be innocent, we need to treat them with respect. We need to know that they have got rights accorded to them in the Constitution and that they are innocent. Let's not treat them like they're criminals. Let the courts of law prove such. Thank you. Thank you. Nyeko? Uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I'm Nyeko Derek from... It's overwhelming. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, I'm so disappointed by the statement by the minister. The people of Masaka, during election, police was deployed everywhere. In this incident, police has been withdrawn to 70%. In a population of uh, 3,000 households, you can only find three police officers. This is the, it's not the first time for this incident to happen. In 2016 and 2018, these incidences of uh, the Jambia happened in Masaka. And police stations were set up. It is too sad that at this moment, all the police stations that were set up in these villages are nowhere to be seen. And yet the lives of Ugandans are at stake. Ma Madam Speaker, I would also, uh, what I noticed was that there are few patrol cars, there are few motorcycles, and these few motorcycles do not have fuel to function. They do not move around. So if, this, if, if the Honorable Minister came to the floor and assured us that they have beefed security, what reasons don't we have as parliament to, 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 to call it uh, selective for massacre? What reasons do, don't, do, do we have as parliament not to, to, to think that uh, the security is not doing enough? Has the commander-in-chief failed to, to secure the people? <laughs> Madam, uh, granted. Thank you, Honorable Colleague, for giving way. Right, Honorable Speaker, the information I want to give to my colleague is that uh, the way the situation is in Masaka, it is so clear that the Commander-in-Chief, just like Honorable Nyeka has said, is not in control. And I can remind you, Honorable Members, he one time said that he cannot provide over a country that people are killed and the poor have done that, cannot be brought to book. So I think, right, Honorable Speaker, we can help this Commander-in-Chief to retire him, or if we cannot, we, cannot, we cannot retire, then we can, as Parliament, you know, put him out, we can censure him, and then we help him, because he made those statements that the moment he cannot preside you over know. a country where people are killed and nothing is being done. I thank you. Order. That's the information I want order, to give Madam you. Order, Madam Speaker, order. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. your time is done by killing people with pangas. There is a proper way of retiring a person, and that is by a ballot. Uh, next. Pointana Affairs. I could only begin by saying, here we go again. It's like the shifting agriculture. At every interval, a particular region of the country is visited with these kinds of killings. And in Masaka, this is not the first time. Yeah. Two years ago, we had similar killings. Right Honorable Speaker, 
But there are some worrying facts by the minister. If I'm to corroborate the, the submission of one and the minister, I get scared as a Ugandan that even on the list of the numbers he has, it's not correct. That a Ugandan gets killed and a minister for security addresses parliament and he can't capture how many Ugandans are killed before we blame other intelligence collapse. How can you stand here, come to this parliament, and the uh, information of Uganda is killed and you don't have, and you were in massacre the other day? What more would we ask of you? And you are a former outgoing, you are the immediate CDF. Right, Honorable Speaker, also when I look at the dates, 50th killing started, 31st is today. Going by his numbers, the difference between 5th and 26th is 26 days. Number of people killed, 26. That means every single day, a Ugandan gets killed. And the minister is here, very relaxed. And I've seen even army representatives, their mood do not capture the emotion that people are going through. The seriousness, the urgency that is required to tackle this issue. Can is it's despicable that sub county parishes don't have money for fuel for modest patrol by border borders? Two, the last time these killings happened, and I'll beg carefully to make this statement General Kareka Yura was the IGP. I stood before this one minute, Honorable Speaker, and informed this country. That Meru may, may look too far. The problem could have been at a close corner. Before we know it, the president was saying there was Kawukumi. Before we know it, people like Sila Jeba Kareke were running for their dear life. Therefore, when these issues happen, before we bring other agents. Honorable Seungo, this is not a market. Right right just to shout with information. Right, Honorable, I'm going to give you information. Before these things happen, could you, General, look quite near? You may think the problem is elsewhere when it is the Kawukumi, whom over time you have failed to eradicate from the police, from security agencies. Honorable, thank you, Honorable, Honorable Speaker. Leader of Opposition. I, uh, from the onset, like said that uh, the emotions being exhibited here should be properly understood and placed in their context. And uh, let me not speak from the onset. My expectations were of a, a purely bipartisan debate about this matter. By person in a sense, nobody would rise to challenge emotions exhibited, and only and only government would have reason to rise and explain the reserve fair response on this matter. But Mr. Speaker, what is politics? Call it a science, call it an art, a craft. All said and done is an attempt to influence society to behave in a particular predetermined way. So define this conversation as non-political. Let's speak to the issues in society. That's my humble appreciation of it. So are we dealing with witchcraft or politics? Where are the speaker? The Honorable Gentleman and General, as well as the Minister of State for Internal Affairs, did present a statement which we appreciate at long last. On Thursday last week, the Honorable Speaker, I had a meeting, a very emotional meeting in the offices of the Speaker with the Minister of Security, General 
Mwezi. Together with uh, colleagues from Greater Masaka to try and appreciate the complexity of the matter and whether there was reason convincing as to why government cannot come on top of the situation. The general convinced us that uh, he was immediately moving to align and work with all teams to come on the top of the situation. Since our meeting last week, more than 10 lives have been lost. And I was wondering, just look at the report the general has ably presented. Forget about not being able to capture some death. Look at the dates. One day after another. I would like to inform this parliament right on the speaker. I've been in Masaka for a number of days. I have met community leaders. I have met sections of security. I would like to report unequivocally and without fear of contradiction to this house that the government has a confidence deficit from the people of Masaka. And a very serious deficit. And I would like to implore the general, who Masaka holds so dear because he worked in Masaka, and uh, they really have very, very warm feelings about you, that there's a huge deficit of confidence in security. Over the last few weeks, right on the speaker, since this matter came on the floor of parliament, because the Honorable Abed Wanika only raised it the second time he hope I'll have this complete right on the speaker, because it's very, very important that we get to understand where we are. I, I do plead. Right on the speaker, we informed the Minister for Security, because Dr. Abed Wanika and other colleagues moved, Honorable Kakande and others, to meet with the community and security leaders. And they were informed that we are hardly facilitated. We have no fuel. The motorcycles are grounded. Personnel is non-existent. And, and, and this was really very disturbing. The same information I was given, 10 days, 8 days after meeting with security, right on the speaker. So what really is the problem? That after 20, 30 days, not a single minister have found their way to massacre, to even hazard a meeting with anyone to speak to the people. Instead, people who speak for security in Masaka have been chiding and challenging the community about their troubles. And this actually is the reason why confidence went down low. At the moment, they were telling the community that, look, you people are in defiance of curfew, so you will be killed. You people, you see, you have your own issues. And right now, Speaker, this is the House of Parliament. This needs to be properly recorded. The same people manning security in that sub-region, or the same people who tormented the communities during the elections. Okay? So even if today you did take their mamba amount of uh, motorcycles without having to find a reason why you must work with the same people who are tormenting and hounding suffering people, there is a problem, right on the speaker. I would like to suggest in finality, right on the speaker, the Ministry of Defense has undertaken to recruit LDUs. And uh, yesterday, in a meeting I held with the police leadership in Masaka, with LC1 leaders and LC2 leaders, the LCs complained that the people being recruited as LDUs are alien to the community. That actually, they see individuals who come and rent in their villages for a week. Before they know it, they are their LDU recruits. So, aliens are being recruited, right from the speaker, into LDUs. So, I would like to raise a red flag to whoever is recruiting LDUs 
that if you think you are going to solve a situated problem in the community, please watch your lines on who you are recruiting. Involve the LCs in who you are recruiting. Secondly, a conversation whether you actually need to recruit LDUs or more police constables. This should really be assessed. And uh, I want to invite my friend to rethink what they're doing, whether the budget are available. Should you go to internal affairs to recruit more police constables? Or actually you need LDUs and the ways, their ways, the way we know them. Thirdly, second right on the speaker, would like to share into the findings of government when we had the same problem between 2017 and 18. We are being asked to do this symbiotically as people. So, but we do not have information as to the findings of government over the past same manner of killings. So how do you help? Thirdly and lastly, by the speaker, having communicated about the deficit of confidence in organs of the state, in as far as Security is concerned. I would like to invite this House, right on the Speaker, to consider sending the Committee of Defense and Internal Affairs to go and interview and interact with the community and stakeholders to go to the root of the problem. My sense is that the committee will open up to a committee of parliament so that we can debate their findings here and in a time so short that we can arrest the problem with lasting solutions in which leaders of the people from the House of Parliament have made an input and have done their oversight. Right on, Speaker, I submit. Thank you. Emphasizing seriously on strategic intelligence. Right now, right on, Speaker, in each and every parishes, sub counties, we have very serious structured intelligence. We have pisos in the parishes, gisos, disos, and right now, as you move right over speaker, if you find 10 people gathering, you must know there is an intelligent person among those people. Is the honorable member in order to thank the, the minister for applying strategic intelligence, yet they have failed to apply the critical and tactical intelligence in this matter. Is it in order? Honorable Olanya, I just knew you wanted to speak. <laughs> what the member is saying, we need strategic intelligence for us to know the culprits who are killing people. We don't need to rush. We need to gain that deficit of confidence that has been lost. We need to have people who are going to see who is doing what. Not, not that he's saying, not what you're meaning. The member is right. Thank you, Honorable, right, Honorable Speaker. At this screen, we'll automatically reduce, right, Honorable Speaker. I thank you because this concerns the lives of all of us. Let's support the minister in any way we can with information so that this matter is resolved once and for all and the people of Masaka settle down, I beg to submit. The member is standing and holding something we don't understand. Are we safe? Some of us are not used to juju. We might get blind from parliament. Is he in order? Very much in order, the rest of my... <laughs> Madam Speaker, let me answer that for my... In the procedures and the orders and everything like that. The people of Uganda need genuine debate. Madam Speaker, that apart, I was in Chanzanga. And I wanted to add to the minister because he did not come out with very salient motives of why these people are killing our people, the citizens. Two things, Madam Speaker. One is political, 
The other one is social culture. The political one is reminiscent of the 1960s, 68, 69, 70. The condos were here. They still started within the central region here. Now, the purpose of it is, of course, to discredit the present government, have it maybe take drastic measures, possibly declare a state of emergence, which itself has other underlying issues. Madam Speaker, the social front, the social cultural front, my friends in Chanzanga, where I've been for quite a long time. Order, Honorable Speaker. Order. Order. Yes, uh, you've, so. uh, you've clearly said we debate in a non-partisan way. For a honorable member to come here and draw conclusions and say there is a political motive and that people want to discredit government, that they are working to ensure that a state of emergency is declared in central region is not only being sectarian in, in his speech, is also throwing deep, deep conclusions over this matter. Unless he furnishes this parliament with actual facts of a write-up of a rebel group, unless you know it and you are part of it and you know their motive, are you in order to draw that conclusion that a certain group has a political motive? Do you know it? Have they spoken? Are you part of them? Are you in order, therefore, honorable colleague? Members are... Right, Honorable Speaker, you cannot have security effectively do its job without a good intelligence system. In, uh, in 2019, the GISOs took uh, the government to court over unpaid salaries. Right, Honorable Speaker, in the Attorney General's defense, he said there was no evidence that ISO has ever hired the GISOs, therefore automatically dismissing the existence of the GISOs. We very well know that at the district level, one of our key resources for intelligence are the GISOs. Through you, Right Honorable Speaker, I believe it is high time government brought a report to this, to this House on the status of the GISOs in this country. I beg to submit. Thank you, uh, Agnes. The area of Kavonera has always had issues. When we were doing the investigation on human rights violations, the people in Masaka testified a lot of terror that they underwent during elections. And now the killings are on. Remember, they had happened in 2017, 2018. My submission, I would add on the issue of intelligence. There is something wrong with our intelligence. If, if up to now we have not, allow me use my time well. Allow me use my time because the speaker will say I've given you my time. Please. Let him clarify. Thank you too speak to the very issue you've really hinted on about the committee you chaired that highlighted gross human rights violations. What happened to the record? We've been looking for it in the, uh, on the floor of parliament. No report was given. At what stage are we? Where did we end with that report? You seem to have the information by yourself and a few members. All right, I'm right. the leader of opposition. You are aware we concluded when the, those were the reports that we didn't present. I think we can handle that issue from another fora, but for now, it is the issue of massacre. We, we can reinstate the, uh, the report if the report helps this country. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, so, I was submitting that the issue of intelligence really leaves a lot to be desired. I saw Yesterday, RDCs were transferred. Can, what has the minister done about his intelligence system? The GSOs, the PSOs, the DSO, what is it? If they cannot provide information, what, what action has been taken? 
Secondly, Madam Speaker, the recommendations are very good. But at this point in time, I get a little bit uncomfortable with recommendations. Maybe he would have said, we are going to do this. We are requesting for support. We, want, we are going to deploy all we are, but recommending to who? It is him, it is the, the minister is one who is in charge, and it is government. So I would prefer a little more action oriented submissions than the recommendations that we got. And then, uh, lastly, the issue of security right now in Masaka. I think when it got to the mandate, the police is charged with law and order. But now it has gone beyond the issue of law and order. It's a matter together so that we, we, we get rid of the insecurity totally in Masaka. And then the curfew. Madam Speaker, for me, I would actually think that curfew needs to be implemented as it is. Where do people with the machetes pass to go and kill people between 8 and 10 or whatever time when nobody is supposed to move beyond 7 o'clock, Madam Speaker? I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They might not be perfect, we have very many points of order, of procedure of what raise, but we believe for the floor of debate. It's always good a few issues to be left. That's why I beg your intelligence, right, Honorable Speaker? Yes, uh, you know, currently, what is happening in Masaka is very annoying. I remember we had a similar situation in Acholi sub region until when we engaged the government. And upon our engagement of the government, General Kali Kaihora went and took come in a Chole sub region. He deployed the security personnel heavily. He reactivated the pisos, the gisos, and all the intelligent agencies within the villages. And within two weeks, unnecessary killing went off completely. Here, what is happening in Masaka? I am seeing that there is laxity of government. The situation whereby killers could write a letter and inform the community that we are coming at this particular time. And the government does not take step, and truly the killers come at that same time that they are put in writing. This is an indication that there is a planned move to punish the people of Masaka. It looks as if the government is not interested in handling this matter. It looks as if the government is trying the ways of punishing the community who are in Masaka. But that is not the way to go. Human life is more important as per now. Let the security personnel, the intelligent officers who are everywhere in this country, let them do their work. I am telling you, the moment every security is deployed in Masaka, within one or two weeks, all those things will disappear. Government should have a good will in bringing this matter into an end. That's what I can say. Asante, my brother.